what is Vikasit Bharat for you? Well, thank you, Shamika, and good morning to everybody. And I will give a perspective from a U.S. because you have to understand the economy of the U.S. is still growing. For the last 10 years, its share of global GDP has gone up and up. And we have a new administration coming on January 20th. And you will see, I call a internal turmoil and some external uh, waves, in the, especially in the supply chain and global trade. Now, keeping that in mind, the ambition of India to be at 10, 20, 30 trillion uh, is very real. The question is, what will it take to reach that objective? One of the most important things for India is to keep on attracting, on the average, $100 billion FDI annually. Uh, unless we are able to secure that, the, uh, the growth challenge becomes much more prohibitive because you have to bring in foreign direct investment and also technology mm -hmm. from that perspective. So now the question you have to ask is, you have Trump administration, which is coming in, which is saying America first, which is saying that 20% tariff on every goods coming in, except China, where 60% they're putting in. So you will see a massive shift happening in, and disruption happening in global supply chain. I think it's important to understand that that's where India has to maneuver dealing with Trump administration as to keep on getting the investment coming into India. Uh, since it's an ideas conclave, I will leave three different perspectives to take forward as we deal with the incoming Trump administration to drive this ambition of a 10, 20, or 30 trillion dollar economy. Number one, you have to understand the appointments Trump is making, especially in the defense arena. Yeah. You have Radcliffe, who's coming as director of CIA. You have Mike Walls, who's coming as national security advisor. And then you have Mark Rubio, who's coming as secretary of state. All three are China hawks. They basically want to take China head on, be very aggressive with China. And they say India is an ally from their perspective. So that means we have to leverage the security aspect of that ambition of America dealing with China, which can percolate into our economic ambitions with the United States. That means, number one, you have a quad arena where you have four countries, Japan, Australia, India, and the United States. If you look at the GDP, it's around $35 trillion. U.S. has a trade agreement, FTA with Japan. It has a FTA with Australia. India has some kind of a trade agreement with Japan and also with Australia. So we need to figure out how do we basically get these four economies to trade a little more efficiently, to transfer technology, move capital, because now you are basically working in a very closed environment, which is tied to a security umbrella. You have to understand it was Trump who elevated the Quad to a state leadership level. So that's his child. He sees that. So we got to leverage that. That's very critical. Now, once you drive from a security umbrella to an economic umbrella, you will see an easy transition happening uh, from an India perspective also. Because it, it is important to understand almost every large economy in the world after the Second World War leverage U.S. to grow itself. True. You look at Japan, look at Korea, you look at uh, Germany, look at UK or France, even China. Yeah. Without US, China would have not grown to that economy. So I think India has to leverage that. So that's that's one. And it's critical to understand, uh, for example, within the Quad umbrella, uh, we'll talk about, and we need to start talking about secure supply chain or secure sourcing, because it's no longer French shoring, it's no longer about our sourcing. We need to convey the message, we are a security partner. Secure sourcing is critical for you from India itself. Pharma, for example, 39% of the prescription drugs in the United States come from India. But 70% of the API India gets is from China. How do you basically work together to drive that secure sourcing itself? The second aspect is, is uh, basically America first. 
you have to understand America has been a very generous nation by investing in other countries, opening its economy. And I think where it has kind of been left behind is China took advantage of that, especially flouting the WTO rules. And, and in the last 40 years, almost every manufacturing has moved to China. And the U.S. has lost millions of jobs. And, and almost it has an impact on a very high on unemployment, especially in the blue collars. Mm -hmm. So the, the masses are upset about that. So they are saying America first, and that's one of the reasons Trump won the election itself. It is important from an India perspective that we somehow marry America first with Atma Nirmar Bharat. And the reason I say that is, is we should start changing the thinking of China plus one strategy to US plus one strategy. And the reason I say that, for example, U.S. is focusing on chips coming in, manufacturing in the U.S., but they're nine nanometers and below. India's focus on chip manufacturing, which is 20 nanometer and up itself. Or we look at from uh, uh, other aspect of supply chain. See, you have to understand, it, it took 40 years for manufacturing to move out of U.S. into China. It will take minimum 20 years for it to move back. That's why India can play a pivotal role by saying U.S. plus one strategy because we are a security partner, we're going to work with you. The final thing I like to say is corporate America. Regardless, you may say who's most powerful, the White House or the State Department, others, is the corporate America. You have to understand they drive their agenda in every aspect. You look at Elon Musk putting over $30 million in Trump's election campaign, basically taking X, driving the whole agenda. Look at the appointments. Most of the appointments are coming to the Wall Street itself. So we need to start thinking how we leverage that. I'll give you two incidents where it sends a very strong story. We worked very closely with Elon Musk uh, to come to India. We worked with the PMO. We worked with everybody to change the policy. One hour before he was supposed to get on the plane, he calls me and says, listen, Mukesh, I'm not going. And uh, no explanation. We had to convey here. We had to fix the meeting with the prime minister. And uh, next day, we, we found out that basically the Chinese had stepped in and said, listen, we will give you everything you want. Don't go to India. That's one. And this was month of May when there's a prime election campaign for the prime minister itself. The second thing they said is, we'll give you more. In three days, you come to China and meet with the pre uh, premier there. In, in, in essence, basically, we'll stop Tesla coming into India, but we will also stop him meeting with the Indian prime minister by showing that he's meeting with the uh, Chinese prime minister. You have to understand, in every category, China will make every effort. Yes, it has kind of eased up on, on the border uh, with, with, the US, uh, with India. It will make sure that from every aspect, the rise of India does not go past China's rise. That is a given factor, and that was going to continue to play. The second aspect I like to say is this: when President Xi comes to U.S., what he does is the first set, set of meetings always happens with corporate America. So what they have done is they have basically selected 50 companies, 50 CEOs, and basically granted them more like an honorary Chinese citizenship they have access to everybody in China so they can move things very efficiently. Yes, we are a democracy here. Yes, state have their own agenda itself. But I'll give you an example. A global chairman of a company who has large 10 mega factories in China wants to move eight of them to India. And he calls from London. He's waiting for his plane landing right for the last 40 years, eight hours to be land in India so he can decide to set up those factories. So I think what the message is, is we have to target the top 50 companies, top 50 technology we want them to come to India and make sure these companies, their CEOs are able to move efficiently in this market. So three different things I'd like to suggest again in closing is, is basically is leverage the quad from security to the economic agenda, Figure out how to merge America first with, first with Atman Nirmar Bharat and go ahead and leverage the corporate America because they'll make things happen for you. Mukesh ji, US and India are like living 
to you know uh, countries with democracies we are we have this living bridge in terms of just the number of people what used to be our relationship with the uk before it's now with the us we have lots of our youth uh, uh, you know who are settled who are uh, no longer youth they're running companies and the economy in the us we want to have a better relationship with the us and the us also wants to have better relationship with us trump is giving us a window of opportunity hopefully what do you foresee as as one big challenge that we should really be focusing on right now when you look at uh, basically he is going to be a transactional president uh, not a structural president and uh, while the prime minister has uh, a very good relationship with him uh, i think geopolitical uh, alignment with the us is very very strong uh, economically our trade is around 200 billion dollars uh, the technology transfer under iset uh is is taking place and you have uh, roughly 5 and a half million indian americans which make around 1 and a half percent of the population but they're producing 6% of the gdp so doing very well i think that the biggest challenge we see in the trump administration if we don't handle it right it is going to be the economic aspect because when you have america first driving his agenda and they basically go and put 20% tariff on india and i can envision the bureaucracy having a knee jerk reaction to that we will also put 20% rather than thinking how we manage that that's where i see early on some kind of a turbulence in relationship geopolitically absolutely we are aligned from that perspective but i just want to come back on other aspect on the manufacturing manufacturing is not just about economic growth today manufacturing is also about national security the ukraine war showed very clearly we have crossed 1000 days of war that if you don't have a strong industrial base you cannot sustain a war mid to long term itself so it is important that india keeps on driving his industrial based manufacturing agenda as strong as he can because it's not just about economy it's about national security also that's an excellent point